Shalom. First of all, I just want to say call Halayim La Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Makai Kadash. The bonus to the apostles, great millstone, peace and mercy to the elect. That's uh, labor and his work. And uh, you know, this is just gonna be a quick hit lesson on um, father, the importance of having a father. You know, because our people as a whole are fatherless, meaning we don't have the protection from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai as a whole as we as we once had. Because when Yahab Bashim Yashai, or we're near Yahab Bashim Yashai, as a nation, when we're joined to our power, nobody can, nobody can mess with us. Nobody can fuck with us as a nation. That's why the Lord said, Deuteronomy 7, 6, um, you know, that the, we're a holy people, you know. Thou art, thou art a holy people above all the people of the earth. Deuteronomy 14 and 2, same thing. So, you know, through the spirit, I just want to go through the lesson real quick. And uh, as you can see on the screen, LeVar Ball with his son Lonzo, and if anybody, if you know anything about the Ball brothers or the Ball family, the three brothers, two of them made it to the league. One of them is like a superstar, Lamelo, but uh, Lonzo is a good player too. And uh, the other one, Leangelo, he he's playing professionally somewhere. I forget where. Um, I think he was in the G League or something like that. But either way, uh, all three brothers became successful. You know, basketball players, and 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 they had a show, and they were, they was a rich family, you know, whatever of 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 Israelites, you know, Jake, you know, the Levar looked like, you know, to me, he got it's probably a Judite, uh, that's what I'm thinking, but you know, either way, all the sons, the, the mother's an Edomite though, or a Latina chick, I don't know, she kind of looks ambiguous, but whatever. The point is that they came out light skinned or whatever, but they they're Israelites, obviously, you could tell. Now. The point is that LeVar Ball is an example of a great father, man. Look at that. That that man produced three great, fine young men, you know. Upstanding, you know, young men brought forth by a, 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 a great father. So, you know, without a good father in your life, you're going to struggle in life. You're going to have a lot of setbacks. and You know what I mean? Without you having a pro that guidance of a father figure. You know, whether it be a father or stepfather or uncle, you know, somebody that, that's there for you. But it has to really, it, it's nothing like having your actual father there, you know, because, you know, he's going to love you more than, you know, anybody else could. Now, through the spirit, um, through the spirit, this is uh, Exodus chapter 20, and it says, verse 12, it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God uh, giveth thee. So, as you can see, the father is always mentioned first before the mother because the father is the head. He leads and he's the he's the progenitor of the of the race. Or uh, he's the one that carries the seed line. The mother has her importance, of course, but the father's always first. That's why when we read Numbers one and eighteen, it says that they declared their house by the, by the matter of fact. Let me just jump to it. It says uh, Numbers chapter one and eighteen, and it says um, and they. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. You see, the house of their father. is Because the, the, your father is the reason you're an Israelite. You understand? When you go through the lineage, Matthew, the first chapter, you read all of the generations of, up, up leading up to Yahawashai. Everyone that descended from the line. So... They didn't mention no women. Why? Because the, the man is the one that carries the seed. That's, that's why ultimately the man is the real prize, especially a Hebrew Israelite man. That's why scripture say in Isaiah 13, 12, I'll make a man more precious than fine, than, than, fine, than, than fine gold. You know, a man is very precious. How many beautiful women are there in the world? But how many elect men of Israel is there? There's only 144,000 and one third. That's it. You know? I mean, two thirds of, of, of our men are also Israelites too, but then they're, they're not—they're not going to receive the kingdom on the first go around, anyways. But all—all all of Israel, all the Israelites' men are gods, as the Lord said in um, Psalms eighty-two and five. You know, so when you deal with a with an Israelite, even if you're of another nation, right, you would want to deal with an Israelite because, the, you know, we're the top nation. Even in captivity, we're the top nation amongst these desire, desirable amongst these. Uh, Amongst the women, you know. So, anyways, the point is that the man ultimately is the prize. Though the, though the woman has her, you know, she has her value, of course. You know, we don't, we're not here to. We love women, of course, 
But the the point is that, you know, there's a there's an order in this fucking society. You know what I mean? The woman is put over the man. The script says in Jeremiah 31, 22, a woman uh, shall compass a man. The Lord will create a new thing on earth. A woman. That's a new thing for, you know, these these women to try to usurp you. But anyways, all that's going to be done away with in, in the kingdom. You know? And it's starting to go away now because we're getting ready for Isaiah 4 and 1 to take place. Isaiah 4 and 1 uh, said what? Seven women shall take hold of one man. You know, I say, let it be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So anyways, you know, that's besides the point. But it all ties into, you know, a father. At the end of the day, a father is needed in, 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 in the house. A father is needed to raise a, a man or, 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 a, or a woman, you know, or a girl. But the, a, a woman cannot raise a boy by herself for, and, and the, and the, because the boy is always going to have certain things about him that, that the man, you know, is going to be missing because the man's not there. A lot of these men that turn into homosexuals is because they have a, a, a mother. They don't have a father to balance it out. That's why the Lord said what? In Proverbs the 11th chapter, he said a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. The Lord, the Lord would, would have it where there's a man and a woman in the house. You know, in the ancient world, you would have a male presence in the house. Even, even you know, in our generations before, we had male presences in the house where you had a man there. And, it, and for the most part, the men were actually more manly than the men of today. And the men of today are nothing but a bunch of beta male simps. A bunch of, you know, you know, uh, uh, weaklings, if you will. So when it comes to when these women find, you know, men that are different, men that are, you know, actually men, they can't they can't, you know, they can't process it a lot of the times. It's like, you know. Because they're so used to dealing with, you know, low life scums and uh, just, uh, you know, weird, weird, weird men. Because the, the men of today are feminine, man. They're, 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 they're just feminine. They're gone, most of them, you know. So it's a rare thing, especially to find a, 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 a man of the Lord. That's, that's very rare. That's very rare. So that's why Isaiah 4 1 is going to take place, as I spoke about before. But the importance of having a father is, uh, cannot be under, understated. Okay? It cannot be understated. Because I myself had the privilege and pleasure of having a father in my life that allowed me to. You know, be a better uh, person, be a better man. You know, if I didn't have my father, I don't know. I don't know what would happen. I'd probably be dead. You know, because my father has given me a lot of lessons, guidance, hard lessons, right? Not easy lessons, but hard lessons. You understand? Because love is not always, you know, fucking r roses and dandelions and shit. It's not always, you know. It's not always what you think. It's not always. Sometimes it's harsh. Sometimes you have to be harsh. You know, my father was harsh. He, he he was like that with me. But it showed me. He didn't beat me or nothing like that. But he 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 was hard on me all the time. So, and heavenly father is the same way. The Lord said. The Lord said what? Him, those who he loves, he chastened. Right. The Lord is an austere man. Yahweh Shai was an austere man. The heavenly father is an austere man. And us, Lord willing, will be at that number. We're austere men too. We don't fuck it. We don't fuck around. You know, if we have to say something, we say it to the spirit, and um, you know, it has to be. It has to be that way. If we have to rebuke somebody. We rebuke them. We give a damn if they're if they're you know, in, in HOI or you know whatever whatever group they're in. You know, Adam Abbott, whatever. It don't matter. If they go off, they go off. If you go off, you go off, and you gotta be rebuked. The scripture say what. Rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. You know? So the scripts say that we ought, we ought to fear the most high rather than men. We're not, we're, not, we're not afraid of what the hell somebody thinks about what we say about the scriptures. All right? Because ultimately, the scriptures say what? In Ezekiel, the 40, 44th chapter, which I'm going to go there before I go back to uh, Hebrews, right? Ezekiel, or like the apostle, like to say, Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, 44. 
And um, verse uh, 23 says, uh, And they shall teach my people. It's talking about the priests, right? Uh, the difference between the holy and the profane. And cause men to discern between the unclean and the clean. And in controversy shall they stand in judgment. And they shall judge it according to my judgments. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes and all mine assemblies. And they shall hollow my Sabbaths. You see? So we're teaching you the difference between the holy and the profane. We're teaching you the right from wrong. Clean from unclean. And sometimes that shit is austere, man. Sometimes it's going to hurt you. Like, damn, you know? Why is this person saying this? Why is this? Why is this? You know what I'm saying? It's going gonna, it's gonna to rub you the wrong way sometimes. Through the spirit. But it's for your own good. Okay? This word is a purifying agent. It's a cleansing agent. You know? That's why scripture says you ought to examine yourself. Second Corinthians 13, 5 say, examine yourself, uh, whether you are in the faith, right? Look at yourself. Like you're you're unclean. There's things about you that the scripture say that no uh, the apostle Paul said it in no um in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. You know, the flesh is wicked. So this is why we're in the time of Passover, right? So you have to be examining yourself, right? You have to be examining yourself. Especially if you, you know, you've been in, 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 the, in the truth for a little while. Or if you're just coming in. Because either way, we're at, the, we're at the end. So we got to get right. If you don't get right, you get left. What the fuck? You, the Lord's not playing, you know? The Lord's not messing around. You know? When you, how about you start dropping these bodies left and right? Niggas is really going to get uh, 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 serious. People still go, oh, oh I got to repent now. And niggas, it's going to be too late. We're in the midst of Jacob's trouble. Things going to move quick. That chip's going to come, and your weak ass is going to fall for that chip. You're going to fall for the okie doke and then you're going to be destroyed. Or the Lord's going to take you out before, but either way, you wasn't right. You wasn't repentant. So the, you, your heart wasn't right. You, 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 uh, nothing in you click. The Heavenly Father did not wake you up to the fact, you know, and then how you repent. Because you, you, the Lord had rejected you. So you don't want to be like that. So if, you, if you're lucky enough, the Lord gave you this insight to this truth. Take, take it seriously, man. It's your life in the balance, you know? So, anyways, it says, uh, let me go to, let me go here. Um, Hebrews 12 and 7. It says, uh, uh, so like, yeah. <laughs> Hebrews 12 and 7, it says, if ye endure chastening, um, start at uh Five, it says, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Right, the Lord, the, the Lord put chastening on you to better you, refine you. You know, look, it's shit that you're doing that's wicked. It's shit that you're doing that's not right. You gotta get right. <clears throat> yeah, and the Lord's doing it out of love, just like you, a father spanks his child, rebukes the child. You know, teaches the child lessons because he doesn't want the child to end up like, you know, these other children to have no no guidance, no fatherhood. You know. So anyway, it says um, verse six says for whom the Lord loveth. Right. He chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom, whom he receiveth. Why well, I think our people are in gangs, uh, you know, especially Judah and them, Benjamin Levi, all them, you know, even Issachar and them. But. The point is, our people are in gangs, you know, women in strip club, you know, being hoes, uh, uh, jumping from cock to cock. Uh, you know, these are things that happen because mo most of the time they wasn't trained up the right way in the household, man. You know, they wasn't trained the right way. You know, they wasn't uh, cor correctly instructed, you know. They didn't have proper guidance according to the scriptures, you know. They didn't have the proper guidance, the tools, man. They didn't have someone there supervising them, being like, no, no, look, this is not right. You know, this is not right. You got to do this this way for your own good, you know. Someone someone there to, you know, they didn't have that. So look at how they end up. They end up all fucked up in, in, the, in, the, in the jailhouses, you know, in the jailhouses. In the halfway houses, in the um, in the um, 
what's it called? Homeless shelters, you know? So this is not this is not where our people belong. Our people belong in rulership, but because we have no father, fathers in the household, and the heavenly father turned his back on us through the spirit for a time being, you know, until we actually had to, you know, come back to him. Because the scriptures speak about a falling away, all right, of our people. So now the Lord's coming back to us and we're being adopted back. We're being grafted back in. You know? All of us that was being called Gentiles at one point. Right? Now we're being brought back into the fold. The Lord's accepting us. Why? Because of the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made for us. So a lot of you ungrateful fucks out there, <laughs> you deserve what you're going to get because you're ungrateful of the mercy that Yahweh Shai has given you. You know? So it says Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Right? And who trains up the child? It's the father's responsibility along, you know, the, the woman... The woman, obviously, but the, the father trains the child because ultimately the children, they respect the father because they understand, you know, especially if the father is like, a, you know, an alpha male. <laughs> They're going to respect the father more, man. You know, when I was when I was young, a little boy, especially a boy, I my mother, I wouldn't listen to her. I'm like, look, I'm more powerful than you, you know, but if, but the, the, the father come in and smack you a couple of times. You know, you get, um, you get, uh, you get like, man, you know, I really got to listen to, I really got to listen to this man because he's, he's an authority, you know, not, not saying the woman's not, but it's different. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just totally different. But, uh, this is our Hebrews 12 and, uh, six says for whom the Lord chasteneth, he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If he endure chastening, the most high dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Lord chastens not? All right, you see? So if you if you don't chasten you, meaning you're not the son, you're the bastard. It says, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof are ye are all ye partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which have corrected us, you see? And we gave them reverence. How shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? So we had fathers after our flesh that corrected us, and we were subject to them. Now the Heavenly Father's coming in, correcting us. So you have to be subject unto him, because he's even higher. He's a higher authority. You know? It says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which, uh, uh, which hang down in the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out the way, but let, let it rather be healed. You see, so that's the point right there. You're supposed to, you're supposed to take the chastisement and learn from it and grow, you know? Learn from and, and, and understand and move forward and become that new, that new creature. Shut off the old man or the old woman, and, you know, whatever the case may be. But, you know, that's all, it's all spiritual. And the Lord is the one that's calling, you know. The Lord is the one that's healing, you know, through the word, you know. It says Psalms 107 and 20, it says he sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. So when the word is brought to you, you're healed from the destruction because you've now you now you got that mark on you. Ezekiel nine and four, the mark of exemption. You know now 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 the Lord could work with you because He see you differently. You know the Lord sees you. Before you was clouded in sin, right? What does the scripture say? The Lord hears not sinners. He doesn't hear sinners. You know the Most High is not dealing with no sinner. <laughs> All right. Constantly. It says John 9 and 31. It says, Now we know that the Most High heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of the Most High, doth his, and doth his will, him he heareth. Okay, you see? So so you're doing the will. If you're a man, what are you doing? You're doing these lessons. You're doing the sit downs. You have faith. You're praying. All right. You're putting your trust in your how by Shem Yashai. You're a woman. You know what I'm saying? What is your what is your duty? Your duty is to serve your husband, your your man. Your duty is to be faithful. And, you know, and if and if it comes down to it, you know. Oh, oh, oh train up, you know, obviously guide the house, ch children, cook, clean, all that, you know, of womanly duties, you know, bearing bearing the children or whatever. But you know, ultimately the the burden of uh, you know going to war, <laughs> of uh, 
you know, of this ministry, it comes down to the men, you know. So you as you as men, you have to uh, you have to do the will for the Lord to hear you and the women, too. You know, you, so you have your role and the man has his in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. So the Lord said, let all things be done decently and in order. You know, that's what that's why the Lord said, what? There's an order. Uh, the, the Most High, Yahweh Shai, the man and the woman, you see. So that's the order. You know that the Most High set up, and it, and it, and it's work, and it's worked, uh, and it will work because it's it's a divine order. Now, um, I said I was gonna get something else. Psalms forty forty one and uh, four says, and I, and I said, Lord, be merciful unto me and heal my soul, for I have sinned. Against thee, you see, and, we, and that's King David speaking, and we we've sinned against the Lord, man. So we we're in need of a father, man. We're in need of mercy, you know. We're in need of that, you know. We're in need of mercy. It says. Um, This is by First Peter one and three. It says, "Blessed be the, the Most High and the Father of our Lord Hamashiach Yahushai," which the word Hamashiach means uh, anointed, and Yahushai means He uh, saves or He delivers, which is the true name of the Lord, not Jesus the Christ. All right, it says, "Which according to His abundant mercy uh, hath begotten us unto, again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of the of Yahushai Mashiach from the dead." Why is it a lively hope? Because before we were dead with no hope, no spirit, no nothing. Running around being fucking lesbians, homosexuals, having orgies, fucking smoking, uh, uh, smoking PCP, doing all kinds of shit. Coke, crack, cocaine, fucking naked in the streets, worshiping idols, you know, worshiping this, doing voodoo, you know, doing fucking uh, Santeria. You could, you name it, you name it, you name it, you name it, everything under the sun Jake is involved in, man. Okay, our people are involved in the most wicked, wicked things. You know, they become worse than heathens. Why? Because they're fatherless, man. They have no guidance, man. All right. But now we're, we're coming back to having true guidance. All right. So the father's having mercy on us, man. All right. The elect that is, you know. It says uh, Exodus chapter 15 and uh, verse 11 says, Who is like unto thee, O Yahweh, by Shem Yahushai, amongst the gods? Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, and doing wonders? Thou stretched out thy right hand, the earth uh, swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy, oh, it's talking about Egypt. Um, thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. That thou has guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. You see? So in thy mercy, the Lord has, has redeemed our people. Has guided us, you know, unto his holy habitation, meaning his covering. So like he did it in Egypt, he's going to do it again. This Because this is the new Egypt. America. Babylon. In this time that we're in, this is the new Egypt. This is, the word Egypt only means house of bondage. All right? All the idols. When you look at the idols of this place, right? They're in Egyptian inspired. Pyramid. And all C and I, Egyptian inspired, which which the Masons use for to say enlightenment and you know Illuminati all that, right? But when you get down to it, this is Rome and this is uh, Babylon all over again. You, Roman architecture everywhere, Roman numerals. They speak in Latin, Latin on the on the again on the dollar bill, New Coeptus, which means he has uh, shined on our enterprise or he has smiled on our enterprise, right? A new equipment, this Nuvus Order Seclorum, I mean New World Order, right? So these are things that you have to know or that you should know, right, in order to comprehend the scriptures and to comprehend the times that we're in. All right. And when the spirit of Yahweh Bashimash is upon you and you open your eyes, you can see it. All right. But it's always been there in the scriptures. 
It's just the scriptures are written in such a way in a code which only the elect can decipher. And that is a, a man, a, a man, a prophet of Yahweh Bashim a, a a teacher, a scribe. Only a man of Yahweh Bashim Yashai could teach Yahweh Bashim Yashai's word because he's given him the secrets. He's given them the secrets. Amos 3 and 3. Surely the Lord would do nothing, but he would reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. You know? Hosea 12 and 10. The Lord said, multiply similitudes by the, the, the mouth of his servants, the prophets. You know? So, um, it says uh, Psalms 25 and 9. It says, the meek will he guide in, in his judgment. In, in judgment. The meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his ways. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. You see? And for and for thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon me for mine iniquity, for this is great. For it is great. You see? So this is what you're supposed to be asking. These are prayers, man. Lord, pardon me for my iniquity, man. God, I know I'm wicked. You know? And I know I need to change. And, yeah, and you know, because the Lord will kill you. All right? That's why you know it's such, it's such a it's such a it's just it's such a um, heavy thing, man. You know to repent. It says uh, John sixteen and verse uh, yeah it's spiritual, and I probably close it right here uh, if the spirit don't um, if the spirit will allow. It says John sixteen and thirteen. It says how be it when when he when the spirit when he the spirit of truth is come, uh, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. You see? And he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and it, and shall show it to you. And all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore I said that he shall take of mine, and he shall show it unto you. So this is the Spirit. The Spirit is guiding us into all truth, man. You know? So yeah, the Heavenly Father is taking us back. And, uh, you know, the... Because we're married unto the Lord, so the Lord's taking us back, and He's being a, a, a He's being a father unto us again. You know, these are all, you know, these are all things that are going to be beneficial to the nation of Israel as a whole and to the earth. Because when we rule, when rulership, when we're the earth is being governed by the laws of Yahweh Shem Yashai, it's going to be a beautiful paradise with no with no uh, no wars and sickness and death for the Israelite people. All right. Because we're going to be perfect. These other nations are going to, uh, are still going to die because they're going to commit sins. You know, but we're, they're going to keep our laws. Going to, every, everybody's going to be underneath our authority. All right. But we're going to be immortals because we're going to be changed. You know, we're going to be changed. And we're going to keep these laws pursuing the Hebrews. The eighth chapter is going to be written in our inward parts. All right. So, yeah. But we're going to govern the world, the earth. Underneath the laws and statutes and commandments of Yahweh Shem Yashai. You know. So uh with that I want to say call Halay Mla, Yahweh Bashim Yashai Bashim, Kakwadash, the bonus be to the apostles and elders great millstone, where I was taught this truth through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yashai and, and uh the water again for the spirit to do the lesson. And uh with that I'll be on to the next one. This today's the uh Passover, so you know, it's a spiritual day. You know, solemn assembly. So you know, enjoy, but have a have that in the back of your mind. That's a solemn assembly, and uh, this is life or death, man. So you know, pray without ceasing. Shalom for now.